Tonight, a 73-year-old woman ambushed without warning and stabbed in a cruel attack. The Reserve Bank boss says Australians can cut spending and work harder to deal with interest rate pain. Melbourne Olympic hero Harry Garside clears his name in a twist on shock charges. A warning for drivers in Melbourne's northwestern suburbs, the latest live. Prince Harry lashes out from the witness box. And a determined Neil Danaher turns to technology to deliver his powerful message. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. A 73-year-old woman has been stabbed repeatedly in a vicious random attack. She was walking home after visiting her elderly mother when she was ambushed. Stabbed in the back in a random act of violence as she walked home from her elderly mother's house in South Geelong last night, a 73-year-old woman is lucky to be alive. She's been able to make her way to a resident close by where she saw a light on and uh, they've provided her with first aid. She was taken to hospital with serious injuries and a 32-year-old man was arrested nearby a short time later. I do want to stress in regards to it, it is very rare that a random person is attacked in the streets with a knife like this one. As I said, most parties are known to each other. Today, detectives combed the scene for a weapon, searching through letterboxes, bins and bushes. It's really scary and shocking. They say the lighting is bad. South Geelong man Jordan Powell was charged this afternoon with intentionally causing serious injury. Police say he had earlier threatened someone outside the local Coles. His lawyer told the court he suffers from a long list of mental illnesses. This area has seen a spike in knife crime recently. In the past month alone, there have been six reported stabbings in Geelong, including one last Sunday. The victim is recovering in University Hospital Geelong. She is in hospital and she's undergone some surgery and she's got to go under, undergo more surgery. Police are yet to find the weapon involved. Beth and Yeoman, 7 News. The Reserve Bank Governor has defended a 12th interest rate rise, arguing Australians can handle the pain. Philip Lowe says they can cut costs and work harder to cover rising repayments. Like so many mortgage holders, Mia de Rauch is buried under waves of interest rate rises. The Torquay videographer has taken a second job at a local gin distillery just to keep up. Yeah, it just it feels completely relentless. Ms de Rauch is doing exactly what the Reserve Bank Governor recommends. If uh, people can cut back spending or in some, some cases find additional hours of work, that would put them back into a positive cash flow position. So it is really frustrating um, I don't think they're kind of understanding the sentiment of what's going around, especially for businesses and individuals after, you know, COVID restrictions. Rates rise as the economy slows. Growth at just 0.2% in the opening quarter, much lower than many economists forecast. I think that will continue to be the case as these higher interest rates in particular bite. <laughs> Philip Lowe knows few are dancing about yesterday's 12th rate rise in 12 months. And this is understandable that people are having to cut back in spending. And I think that's going to be the, the uh, environment we're operating in for a while yet. The crunch is hitting so hard, Anglicare reports a 25% jump in demand for help. And for the first time, there's a queue to speak to one of its financial counsellors. It's the parents with children that have been the fastest rising cohort of uh, groups seeking our emergency relief. The biggest issue, says Paul McDonald, is a lack of affordable housing that's pushing up rents. More Australians are turning towards credit. The number of new purchases on a credit card is up 7%. That's the highest monthly figure since records began in 2002. The increase um, over the last couple of years um, is definitely a bit of a concerning trend. Anglicare warns against buy now, pay later schemes, especially if money's tight. You're just going to find yourself in the cloud of debt going for months on end. We shouldn't fall into a state of despair. Australia's got a great economy. Mia de Rauch and her partner feel it's going to be a long slog. You do what you have to do. Blake Johnson, 7 News.
A courtroom twist has cleared Victorian Olympic hero Harry Garside of a domestic violence charge. The case was dropped after the boxer produced new video evidence to clear his name. This man, Harry Garside. He's a Commonwealth gold medalist. Harry. Bronze at the Olympics. And this was another fight Harry Garside was determined to win. Moments ago, the police prosecutor informed the court that they have dropped all matters against me. An extraordinary turnaround in four weeks. From being charged to case withdrawn. Today, I've been vindicated. After mobile phone video, he recorded, revealed he didn't start a fight with his ex-girlfriend Ashley Rusco. She did, and he was acting in self-defence. Evidence that proved he was telling the truth. I'm absolutely stoked. It's, um, it's a great day. Miss Rusco went to police with the domestic violence allegations while Garside was filming a reality TV show in South Africa. Very, very proud of him. Yeah, and Australia love him. <laughs> <laughs> but when he returned to Australia, Garside was arrested. The 25-year-old said he was blindsided. Will you be fighting them, though? Of course. But... He always maintained he didn't hit his ex. Are you able to say what happened that night at all? No, unfortunately not. She could now face charges for making a false report. He's used to challenges, but Harry Garside says the past month has tested his resilience, his family's too. His mother is currently undergoing treatment for cancer. At least now she can focus on herself and focus on her well-being. As for him... I'm determined to move on with gratitude and a renewed energy towards qualifying for Paris 2024. Leonie Ryan, 7 News. Victorian homicide squad detectives have arrested nine men over a double murder. Cameron Bowe, they were arrested in raids across the city. Peter, dozens of police were involved in this operation over the past two days. Raids were carried out across the city from the northwest to the southeast. It's part of an ongoing investigation into a double fatal shooting. A dozen raids over two days resulted in nine arrests in suburbs including Tarnit, St Albans, Fitzroy North and Hallam. The young men are wanted in connection to a double murder. In February, 29-year-old Atem Atem and a 22-year-old friend were gunned down at Atem's Wyndham Vale home. Another man was left injured and the family dog was killed in the frenzied attack. The nine people of interest have been interviewed and released pending further investigations. Police are also also chasing a gang accused of an armed burglary in Mount Waverley. After forcing entry, they stole two cars and the owner's wallet. These two young men have been linked to a string of alleged home invasions. Yesterday, they allegedly cased this Brighton home before being scared off. But any fear they felt didn't last. Seven News understands the same two entered another house in Brighton before they were confronted by residents. The change in the attitude from some of the young offenders now is they have no fear. So they're willing to break into a house with weapons whilst people are home. That's a massive change here in our state and one we need to get in control of. There's been a recent escalation in violence in recent home invasions. A fortnight ago, a father of two was stabbed during a home invasion at Kew, followed by confrontations inside homes at Brighton and Malvern. Victoria Police is responding to the home invasions while battling a shortage of 800 police officers. The Chief Commissioner hasn't sought extra funding from the government. No, I haven't. Uh, we, um, and you used the word crisis and I, I wouldn't agree with that. They have the statute book they've asked for and they have the resources that they've asked for. Cameron Bow, 7 News. The Andrews government has come under attack during an explosive hearing into the state's budget. A Nationals MP lashed out, calling the Labor Party a joke with no accountability. Firing questions about the budget under a time limit. You need to understand I've got no time, Minister. You haven't answered my question and I want to move on to something else. That is one initiative, but I should also highlight... Okay, just keep talking then. Just keep talking. As the Minister dragged out her answers. I am getting to the budget investment um, and, and to be able to detail some of that for you. I'm getting there. Um, as my, my next point, Mr O'Brien. Frustration bubbled to the surface. I have just demonstrated it is specifically in the budget. Do you want me to lay it out any clearer? Do you want to just waste some more time? 
before it all boiled over for Danny O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Um, Chair. O'Brien. Your time has expired. This is a joke. You guys are a joke. You've got no interest uh, in accountability or transparency. Right, you should be embarrassed Mr. about O'Brien. yourself. The Nationals MP was questioning Mental Health Minister Gabrielle Williams during the Parliamentary Accounts and Estimates Committee. Mr O'Brien was trying to get answers about the second safe injecting room. That's fine. Thank so it's just you. Really important I understand. Today. In due course, the report will be released and, sure. and we will have a comprehensive government response. On the point of order, if we're going to ask ministers questions and all they're going to do is talk out our time, then it defeats the entire purpose of us being here. But and some of the tit for tat response. eventually paid off. The report the government's released from, received from Ken Lay, you will release what the I've, fire report. What I've received, I will be releasing. The Lay report we will, be, will be released. Why won't you say in full? I'm happy to say in full. We Thank will you. be releasing Thank the you. report in full. Chanel Vella, 7 News. Police are hunting a serial rock thrower, putting lives at risk in Melbourne's northwest. Sarah Jones has the latest from Sunbury, and Sarah, the accused, is targeting drivers from an overpass. Mitch, one driver says he is lucky he wasn't seriously hurt after a rock was thrown from Station Street in Sunbury around four o'clock yesterday morning. The object shattered the driver's windscreen and police say this isn't a one-off incident. It's happened at the underpass at least three times in the past week with each attack happening in the early hours of the morning. Seven News understands police know who they're looking for but they're still calling on anyone with dash cam footage to come forward. Mitch. Sarah Jones at Sunbury. Thank you. There's a full-scale emergency in Ukraine tonight with towns and villages being evacuated to escape a wall of water from a massive dam. Both Ukraine and Russia are accusing each other of unleashing the disaster by blowing up the dam. Ukraine's infrastructure hammered across 15 months of war, but this may be the most cruel blow yet. Kahovka Dam destroyed, releasing the country's biggest reservoir, 40,000 people downstream, many with virtually no time to evacuate. To blow up a hydroelectric dam, she says, it's barbaric. From this man, they're just terrorists. A reference to Russian forces who controlled the dam and much of the fast-growing flooded area. The whole world will know about this Russian war crime, says President Zelensky. Russia blames Ukraine. Its ambassador telling the United Nations the Kyiv regime committed an unthinkable crime. We cannot say conclusively what happened at this point. And what we absolutely can say is that the damage to the Ukrainian people and to the region will be significant. The UN says 16,000 have already lost their homes. The downstream flood expected to grow for days yet across towns and battlefields. Tim Lester, 7 News. Weight loss giant Jenny Craig has collapsed after administrators failed to find a buyer for the embattled company. Stores Australia-wide have been shut with more than 300 workers laid off. Jenny Craig's online business has been sold to healthcare technology company Eucalyptus. Prince Harry has taken aim at British tabloids, claiming the media triggered his bouts of paranoia and depression. The Duke of Sussex spent nearly five hours in the witness box, the first royal to be cross-examined in more than a century. As Prince Harry flashes a smile or a smirk, the King's son gets his day in court. The Duke blamed the British media for betraying him as a thicko, cheat and underage drinker. And the Daily Mirror and its former editor, Piers Morgan, of vile behaviour. I wish him luck with his privacy campaign. Look forward to reading it in his next book. Before he even got to the witness box, the Duke's 55-page witness statement was tabled accusing the British press and Rishi Sunak's government of being at rock bottom, as he declared some of the editors and journalists are responsible for causing a lot of pain, upset, and in some cases, speaking personally, death. 
But of the 33 Mirror articles his case relies on, the Duke couldn't explain why most of them contain details already published by other papers or taken from official palace statements or on-the-record interviews with staff or Harry himself. Harry spent nearly five hours in the witness box. At times he appeared bitter and despite his case being heavily scrutinised, he was defiant throughout. His very public battle with the press, a spectacle. Some British broadcasters even paying actors to cover his quotes with cameras not allowed in court. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, Seven News. Back home, Neil Danaher might have lost his ability to speak as he battles MND, but that hasn't stopped him from delivering a powerful address to Melbourne players. The AFL legend called in some high-tech help as he fronted the team ahead of Monday's big freeze and the King's birthday blockbuster. 16 years after departing as their coach, the man known as the Reverend still commands the attention of the Demons congregation. At some stage in life you realise when something bad happens you can't do anything about it. It's already happened. All you can do is what you do next. You get a say in that. Addressing the club using an eye gaze speech machine. I use my eyes to type and I have an app to speak. Neil hasn't lost his sense of humour. This blast from the past triggering a friendly dig at Simon Goodwin. I said, mate, you are looking good in that new white kit, but is there any danger of you getting a kick? <laughs> it's all part of the build-up to Monday's Big Freeze 9, as Neil continues his fight to find a cure for motor neurone disease. He and daughter Beck also stopped in at Magpies HQ. The M&D journey, unfortunately, is not going to be solved tomorrow. It's probably not going to be solved next year. Premiership captain Tony Shaw has joined the celebrity slider list vowing to represent the Magpie Army. Don't say toothless or anything like that. While Melbourne Cup winning jockey Michelle Payne has also pledged to take the icy plunge. I'm not looking forward to that icy water, that's for sure. Tim Watson, 7 News. Looking forward to that. And later in 7 News, we're crossing live as Neil Danaher is given a new honour. And, Tim, there's also a big injury story breaking in the AFL. There is. Mitch, a star player has been rushed to hospital tonight. We'll have exclusive details later in sport. Also, Jordan Degoe granted extra leave at Collingwood. But reinforcements, reinforcements are on the way. How a kangaroos veteran is forcing his way back at Arden Street. The boy from South Melbourne hits the big time as Ange Postacoglu lands a Premier League coaching job and Mitch will cross to London for the latest ahead of the Test Championship final. I'll see you again soon. OK, thanks very much, Tim. Next, Melbourne City Council takes another step towards driving cars off the roads. Also, a mum's agony as she came face to face with her daughter's killer. The details are coming up. The destructive end to a police pursuit in Melbourne's northeast. Greg Norman blindsided in a surprise backflip on a sporting war. Later, a step forward in a cancer battle. And sunshine returns tomorrow, but our rivers may go into minor flood. Full details later in 7 News. A police chase through Melbourne's northeast came to a crashing end early this morning. Officers tried to intercept the vehicle they say was speeding at double the 50k limit. The driver lost control around a corner, crashed through a fence and hit several cars in a holding yard. Everyone inside the vehicle fled and remain on the run. A distraught mother has collapsed in court as she faced the man who murdered her daughter. The 37-year-old former boyfriend stabbed the young mother, then dumped her body in a wheelie bin. Kelly Zhang was denied dignity in death. The young mother's body stuffed into a wheelie bin and dumped at a rubbish tip by her jealous new boyfriend, Jun Siong Tan. Is there anything you would now like to tell me? No. Today, the murdered woman's distraught mum collapsed in court and yelled, you bastard, at her killer, telling a judge, we often wonder why God is so cruel, why he let us lose our only child, and why he let a child lose his mother at the age of nine. 
Last week, Tan was found guilty of the gruesome killing. The court hearing that after the crime, the 37-year-old took his girlfriend's son for a walk to search for his missing mum. Her body was recovered months later, still in her dressing gown. Tip worker Harry Taylor recalled carrying Ms Jung's body out of knee-deep mud. We were glad we had found her, but also depressed a young child was now without his mother. Kelly, we did our best for you. Tan's lawyer told the court his client had been deeply affected after hearing today's victim impact statements. But it was the killer's decision to lie about the murder that put his victim's family through the trauma of a trial. Tan now faces the prospect of life in prison. Estelle Greypink, 7 News. The compensation payout given to Brittany Higgins is set to be referred to the federal government's anti-corruption body. Former Defence Minister Linda Reynolds is expected to report the matter, questioning why the estimated $3 million payout was granted when it was never filed in court. The Parliament House rape trial was abandoned after juror misconduct last year. A bitter sporting battle has come to an end with a shock merger in professional golf. The PGA Tour backflipped after two years of infighting to join forces with the controversial Saudi-backed Live Golf while keeping players in the dark. Striking a deal that ends one of the ugliest sporting feuds in decades. The PGA Tour and Live Golf on the same page. We've recognised that together... We can have a far greater impact on this game than we can working apart. The bitter feud teed off when Saudi-backed Live Golf formed a rebel tour last year, dividing players and fans concerned over Saudi Arabia's track record on human rights. Still, it lured big-name players with big cash, backed by Greg Norman. Let's go! And Australia's Cameron Smith reportedly signing for more than $100 million. Others followed. Some chose to stay. Hideki Matsuama was apparently offered $300 million US to go and stay loyal to the PGA Tour and the European Tour. So these are the guys that are going to be filthy. Defectors were barred from the PGA in a remarkable backflip they'll be welcomed back. The US Open will be played here in Los Angeles next week, the first major championship since the announcement. The bosses will be keen to put forward a united front despite anger and disappointment from many PGA players and officials who feel blindsided by the merger. In the United States, Miley Hogan, 7 News. The move to close more Melbourne streets to drivers has been labelled elitist by City of Melbourne councillor Roshina Campbell. This is actually the opposite. It's an inclusive plan. It's about everybody being welcome. We do not participate in divisive debates. This is very much about an all in. It's not an us and them. The consultation process to redesign the HODL grid opens online later this month. Driverless trucks have taken to Victorian roads for the first time. Next, see the convoy without drivers mixing with traffic. Also coming up, home at last for a young Australian after a holiday nightmare. A Vermont man's 14,000 kilometre run for a mate. And Melbourne's winter night spectacular begins in style. Hoddle Street killer Julian Knight is accusing the Premier of hypocrisy over his refusal to keep Paul Denyer locked up indefinitely as he was in 2014. I will not be engaging in a debate with that person on any subject matter. He lost the right to be part of public debate when he committed the evil uh, atrocities that he was convicted for. He's where he belongs. Daniel Andrews has ruled out supporting a move by the opposition to revoke parole privileges for the Frankston serial killer. A convoy of driverless trucks has taken to Victoria's roads in an Australian first. The trucks mixed with traffic on the Hume Freeway as part of army testing that could eventually help save lives on the battlefield. 
A first on Australian public roads, a convoy of four driverless military cargo trucks. Even on the Hume Freeway, cars passing, their drivers blissfully unaware they were witnessing history. By law, someone must be in the camp, but the vehicles drive themselves, using sensors to avoid others on the road, AI and mapping systems developed for the army. This trial incident free. The pressure was high. The army also tested them at Bathurst, the ultimate aim to use crewless trucks to transport supplies and ammunition. In Afghanistan, such convoys were often attacked. So lowering the, the risk threshold and the number of soldiers exposed to risk by using autonomy is a great opportunity for us. While it is a little disconcerting sitting here as the driver, Professor Muhammad, has his hands up and off the wheel, the operational potential of this new technology, once all the testing is complete, will be enormous. Hopefully saving lives in combat. To pick up casualties and bring them back without necessarily exposing more soldiers to risk. And in a bid to change motorists' scepticism about driverless vehicles, Professor Muhammad recently walked out in front of one and it stopped. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Quite bizarre. A new task force is being set up to help aged care homes remain financially viable in the face of an ageing population. The federal government also wants richer aged care residents to pay more. We must act now. The baby boomers are coming. In the next decade, Australia will have more people aged over 65 than under 18. An Australian man is on his way home after being released from an Indonesian prison. 23-year-old Bodhi Risby-Jones spent six weeks behind bars for a drunken rampage that left a local fisherman with severe injuries. I just want to give my family a big hug. You know, it's been a very long two months. The Queenslander still plans to go back praising the local people and the surf. A gunman has opened fire at a high school graduation in Virginia. A student and a guest were killed with 17 others injured. Kids can't take it, our teachers can't take it, our families can't take it anymore. I beg of you to stop. A 19-year-old man was arrested and is set to be charged with two counts of second-degree murder. A Melbourne man is about to embark on a marathon mission across Australia. He's trying to run 80 kilometres every day for six months to raise money for a cause close to his heart. Tragedy has inspired Sean Bell's dream to become the fastest man to run around Australia. Back when I was 18, I lost a, a friend and football teammate and it really crushed me and it taught me how precious life is. I just focus on one step in front of the other. The 25-year-old plans to do that for 175 days or less, aiming to break a world record, trekking 14,000 kilometres in five and a half months, raising $1.4 million for sick children along the way. The struggle that I'm feeling out on the road doesn't even compare to the struggle that they're going through. Mr Bell will set off from the MCG on March 10 next year, heading up the coast to Townsville. He'll hit Darwin by May, Perth in July and then home via Tasmania by August, averaging 78 kilometres per day. Mr Bell is expected to burn through 20 pairs of runners on the gruelling 14,000 kilometre journey. That's one pair for every 700 k's. It's the marathon runner's second stretch for the Make-A-Wish charity. He ran from Cairns to Melbourne last year despite the shock loss of his coach and mentor just days in. He hopes to channel the same determination this time around. We've got over 950 kids counting down the days until their wish is possible, so these funds could be really critical. Rochelle Brown, 7 News. Good luck with the campaign. Melbourne has launched its Rising Festival to lure visitors to the city over winter. The event kicked off in the colourful car park of St Paul's Cathedral with a packed program of nighttime cultural activities. Rising only in the winter, only in the city. 
We know that our traders are rejoicing. Rising runs until June the 18th. Australia's just taken an important step forward on life-saving cancer treatments after public pleas from TV legend Sandy Roberts. Details are next. Also coming up, fire heroes honoured for an act of courage. The confronting new campaign targeting our children. And live coverage as Melbourne pays tribute to Neil Danaher. That's coming up just before Jane's weather. Two men are on the run after a stolen BMW smashed into an office building in Fitzroy North this morning. Highway patrol officers found a gun and ammunition inside the empty car. Time now for a check on the markets with finance editor Gemma Acton. Gemma, there's more fallout from the Reserve Bank's interest rate hike. Indeed, Peter. Several economists dialed up their forecasts for rate hikes today, which didn't help sentiment among investors. Energy and financial stocks were the biggest drags, with the big four banks all lower. The Aussie dollar has had a quiet day. It's still hovering around 66.7 US cents, while gains in the oil price from earlier this week have now evaporated. Household savings have plummeted to their lowest since 2008 as spending continues to outpace disposable income. Australians have been working through the hefty buffer of spare cash built up during the pandemic, with AMP forecasting our war chests could run out as soon as September. Peter. Thank you, Gemma. There are new tactics to tackle vaping with a confronting sculpture targeting children. It's on view at ScienceWorks displaying the dangerous contents inside e-cigarettes. Toxic chemicals uh, like benzene that's found in, uh, in petroleum or arsenic that's found in rat poison. The exhibition will run through the school holidays. Sandy Roberts' cancer fight has been given a boost with a breakthrough myeloma treatment approved by the TGA. Doctors call it the holy grail of cancer therapies, but it remains out of reach for most patients. TV legend Sandy Roberts shone a light on the rare blood disease. This is my greatest call. Help me find a cure for myeloma. It's taken less than a month for action. The TGA has approved a new therapy in Australia. This approval today really is a major step forward. It's considered safe and effective, but not yet funded. At $600,000 per treatment, it's out of reach for most patients. What we're really crossing our fingers for is for it to be approved and reimbursed uh, later this year. CAR T-cell therapy involves removing some blood T-cells from the patient. They're genetically turbocharged, multiplied in their billions, then returned, where they attack and destroy cancer cells. For myeloma patients, hope just got real. But it won't be ready in time for Jeff Nissen. He's applied to the federal government to fund the life-saving treatment overseas. The sooner I can receive that treatment, uh, the more chance I will of, of living a, a long and prosperous life. Because it's not available here, the only place he can get it is where it's approved, which is in the United States. Around 2,000 Australians are diagnosed with myeloma every year. It's estimated that 230 of those would benefit from this treatment if it was made available here. The problem is, is that we want to see them as fast as possible because sadly people are dying who don't get access to the treatment. Melina Cyrus, 7 News. Two off-duty firefighters have been awarded for their bravery after they saved a woman from her burning home in Melbourne's west. Mick Davey and Rodney Mitchell climbed onto the roof, removed the tiles and lifted the woman to safety in March last year. The Hero Fieries say they're grateful to receive the Chief Officer's commendation for courage, but the real reward was saving the woman's life. Well done to you both. Sport is next with Tim Watson and Tim, an AFL star has been rushed to hospital. Mitch, it has big ramifications for their clash in coming days. We'll have the exclusive story next. Also, we're live with new details on Jordan Degoe's extended break from the Magpies. The Bombers duo ready to take flight after injury in forced layoffs. The Saints prepare to spoil Buddy's party but leave a star behind. And how the boy from South Melbourne made it in the big time of the Premier League.
Welcome back, Star Melbourne midfielder Clayton Oliver is in hospital tonight. Mitch Cleary has the exclusive details of Mitch's comeback. Hopes have taken a major hit. Well, Tim, the gun midfielder has been subjected to an IV drip and antibiotics dealing with the nasty infected blister that has worsened in the last 24 hours. The Demons had locked Oliver in for a return from his hamstring injury, but he was absent from the club yesterday and missed a golf day with teammates today, now racing the clock to prove his fitness in time to face the Pies Monday. At the Bombers, Peter Wright set for his first game of the year Sunday against Carlton, just needing to tick off main train tomorrow. Forgotten tall Nick Cox also to be strongly considered. Dylan Shield still an outside chance to play despite foot troubles. Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody expected to stay in the VFL. The Saints taking off for Sydney. Tim Membry again stuck in the reserves. Marcus Windager and Mitch Owens included in place of Ben Patton and the injured Hunter Clark. Swans co-captain Dane Rampey back from his two-month neck injury returning in what will be Buddy Franklin's 350th match tomorrow night. Tim? Thanks, Mitch. Collingwood has granted Jordan to go extra leave while he's serving his three-week suspension. Tom Brown has details on where to go. He's going, and Tom, he's staying here in Australia. Tim to go. He's got COVID or the flu. He can't go anywhere yet, but he's certainly not going to Bali for his break. At this stage, he's planning to head north to Queensland. Now, Collingwood trust him, stressing like all the other players to go. He can in fact go wherever he wants. He's the fittest he's been. To go, he will do the Pies training program. Went away and return when all the other players come back post by. In all Australian form, his management think the freshen up could see Dugowie return even better post suspension. I've got absolute trust in Geordie. Yeah. On the flip side, of, a, a positive out of this if you can, uh, Geordie's going to have some time away from the club potentially and then we uh, get back to work. I saw last year um, Geordie with a bit of a spell and then uh, a mini pre-season really spiked uh, come September time, so we'll be aiming for something similar. McRae going on to explain that Pat Lipinski will be back for the Kings' birthday clash on Monday. Dan McStay, I also understand tonight, is available for selection. McCreary and Elliott both in doubt for the clash, huge clash with the Demons, Tim. It is. Thanks, Tom. North Melbourne's midfield will be led by young and old against the Giants. Jai Simpkin joins Luke Davies Uniac on the sidelines, meeting veteran Ben Cunnington is set to earn a recall from the VFL. People talk about team first and uh, you know leadership you don't find out until you put under adversity it, it hurts him not to be in the team but for him to think about others shows the quality person he is and the career of west coast ruckman nick nadnui is at the crossroads he's set for more achilles surgery and won't play at all this season there's been high praise for Ange Postacoglu after his official appointment as manager of Tottenham. The Aussies signed a four-year deal with the Premier League Giants with rivals on high alert. Another exceptional manager is coming. He will do an incredible job. And I suppose hopefully we can score one goal away. It's been a meteoric rise for Postacoglu after starting his coaching career at South Melbourne in the late 90s. A green top pitch awaits Australia and India ahead of tonight's World Test Championship. Final Sevens James Brayshaw and Justin Langer are boundary site at the Oval in London. It's the World Test Championship Australia versus India. We're here at the magnificent Oval in London. A bit chilly, a bit cold, but JL, it gets no better than this. Oh, we all love a grand final, James. And listen to the atmosphere building up. There's Indian supporters everywhere. The, green, the wicket looks a bit green to me, greener than usual. Overhead conditions. It might be a bowl force first day for the team who wins the toss. What are you hearing about the Australian lineup? Oh, very settled. I think Josh Hazelwood is out. Scotty Boland. I just got this feeling Scotty Boland is going to be a real handful with him and Ka uh, Pat Cummins. Mitchell Stark, unbelievable lineup with Nathan Lyon. Um, there's a lot of guys wanting to make some runs, David Warner included. Fascinating first day for us. It's not an Ashes test, but have a listen to this. The great Virat Kohli's just walked out on the ground and they've erupted. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, when India are playing, it is hysteria. There's people everywhere and Virat's just walked out. You can hear it. Magnificent atmosphere, a great day for cricket. This is cricket's grand final. We don't get to play them in cricket very often, and it's uh, over two years. These are the two best teams in the in the world. By the end of this match, we'll know who can 
confidently say they're the number one team in the world at the moment. Australia, India, it's a heavyweight bout. Don't worry about that. And it's coming up next on 7, mate. Thanks, guys. And after the pre-match coverage, it's all live and exclusive right here on 7 from 7.30 p.m. Novak Djokovic, a world number one. Carlos Alcaraz will clash in a mouth-watering French Open semi-final. Djokovic downed Karin Hachinov in four, while Alcaraz defeated fifth seed Stefano Tsitsipas in straight sets. Mitch, what a 24 hours in sport it's been. The golf, the cricket, Ange. Ange Postacoglu, what, a, what an appointment that is. <laughs> what a story that is. Who would ever thought that an Australian would end up uh, being a manager over there in the EPL? Of such a powerhouse as well. Incredible. Exactly. And, and he'll do well too. Let's hope Scott Boland gets amongst the wicket takers there They're too. Greener than your garden patch, that is. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Melbourne is honouring Neil Danaher tonight for his incredible courage and we'll be crossing live there next on 7 News. Also, Jane Bunn with the forecast. Jane, take us through this latest severe weather. Well, Mitch, a tornado warning has been issued for the Mallee in Victoria's northwest. I'll have the full details for the state and Melbourne shortly. Star Car Insurance, more than $700 cheaper than what you're paying right now. The motoring bombshell for Aussie drivers. Plus, psychic medium John Edward, his exclusive live studio reading. Messages from the other side. Start with sunrise tomorrow. Neil Danaher's courage is about to be honoured at tonight's Victorian Sport Awards. Andrew McCormack has the latest from Marvel Stadium and Andrew, Neil has just arrived. That's right, Mitch. He's accepting in person one of Victorian Sport's highest honours, the Victorian Sporting Award for outstanding contributions and achievements. A real significant moment to have him accept this uh, in recognition of not only his playing days, but what he's achieved uh, in the past decade in the fight MND cause. $70 million and counting. Neil has spearheaded uh, the raising of this, uh, fighting this disease, which he's done so well over the past uh, decade or so. Of course, he'll be front and centre for what he calls Grand Final Week on King's birthday uh, as he leads that charge for another year of the big freeze. Mitch. Richly deserved. Andrew McCormack at Marvel Stadium. Thank you. Now, here's Jane with the weather. Thank you, Mitch. Melbourne has had generally light rain so far, while the heavier falls on the ranges and in the north of the state. Now, a tornado warning has been issued for the Mallee. I'll have more on that shortly. Melbourne's rain began around lunchtime, so a bright dawn settled into a grey and dreary day. In northerly winds that were gusting 70 k's an hour, it did reach a top of 18. Out there now, still 17. The rain is heavy on the ranges to our north, but it breaks up as it crosses Melbourne and then reforms on the other side of the bay here. So there's been 5 to 10 millimetres so far from Geelong through to Phillip Island. Now tonight, the rain breaks to hit and miss showers with the risk of a heavy or damaging thunderstorm in there too. There is a lot more activity to our north and west. Garoke in the Wimmera picked up 49 millimetres in six hours as rain and storms moved through there early this morning. All of that spread into central parts by mid-morning then heading into the east of the state. And while it briefly eased in the west, the front is starting to move through with another round of showers and heavy thunderstorms there. With that, this part of the Mallee is currently at risk of tornadoes, destructive winds and large hail. That is a powerful storm that we have up in that northwest corner now. This activity does move eastwards this evening. The northeast ranges still have widespread heavy rain leading to flash flooding tonight and into tomorrow morning, along with damaging winds in there too. And all that water has to go somewhere. Melbourne's rivers may go into minor flood tomorrow, even though we'll have sunshine overhead. Several rivers in the northeast are heading into minor to moderate flood. Tropical moisture is pouring into a cold front, why it's heavier north of the ranges today. Now that does continue moving through overnight and tomorrow. Then the next cold front that one well back over there approaches. Now that one doesn't have that feed of tropical moisture. There's no connection up to the tropics. So it won't be bringing as much rain. But the trajectory, you can see there, in behind it, there's much colder air. 
around the nation. Tomorrow, showers are developing in Sydney. They're not much there as they are on the dry side of the ranges. Adelaide, though, lots of showers passing through. That's with that next front, along with some gusty winds. To Victoria, overnight we see the rain and thunderstorms continue in the northeast, while the cold front, that one there, brings showers and thunderstorms with potentially severe characteristics like we're seeing in the Mallee now. Tomorrow it is all dry in the northwest of the state. They take a break. Generally dry weather gradually returns as the rain and storms do clear eastwards. Then the next front does hit the southwest at night, a burst of showers with that one and colder air. Closer in overnight, we have showers and the risk of storms. That clears during the morning and then sunshine actually returns in the afternoons, tops around 17. In the city expecting 17, rain and showers, the risk of a storm that clears during the morning will have sunshine in the afternoon. So on the eight-day outlook at Friday, we have lots of showers passing through, a dry weekend and into Monday too, another burst next week. So tomorrow, heading for a top of 17, all of the wet weather overnight that clears in the morning, Sunshine returns, Mitch. OK, great. Thank you, Jane. And that's the way it is this Wednesday, the 7th of June. Thanks for your company. For now, from the 7 News team, good night. Stream 7 News anytime, live and on demand on 7 Plus. And with 7news.com.au, you'll know the news now.